An empty circus tent. The lights are dark. The stage is empty. The audience empty as well. A lone figure struts out into the middle of this circus. A four-legged creature that hops on top of a box and stands up. This creature, as a light shines down upon it, begins to speak. <sighs> How ironic that when all is said and done, I am at a lack for words. <laughs> Perhaps there is another way to begin this tale. Uh, Maestro, if you would. And you see, wheeling out to the center is this mechanical contraption, the uh, torso and arms and head of a humanoid, uh, but on four wheels. It is a mechanical carnival attraction thing uh, with a big wind up in the back. And you see this thing carries in its arms a guitar. The dog you see before you jumps off of the platform and goes over to the wind up and cranks it once, twice, three times and goes back up on the stage. The mechanical thing begins to play as the dog begins to sing. sing the verse the show's about to start give them all a piece of your heart turn away the extinction curse master of the rings he stole the doom god of man took from life now desert sands. They cursed his name and cursed his soul. A show he gave for all to see, a beacon in the night. Tricks to dazzle, tricks to fright. A circus that could never be. Then one day he disappeared, gone without a trace. No one there to take his place Just as he had always feared What shall all the actors do? The roustabouts and clowns Now their leader makes no sound Tiger tears the tent in two From underground those he betrayed Come to stop the show Striking quick they'll never know The curse is cast, the cards are played the crowd begins to roar and jeer, the lights and dancers sway, the greatest show it ends today. In madness, chaos, pain and fear,
raise the tent and sing the verse the show's about to start give them all a piece of your heart turn away the extinction The Circus of Wayward Wonders performs in an enormous tent capable of holding hundreds of people. And that's a good thing, as it seems the entire population of Aberton has turned out for this show. Many of the town's most prominent citizens, including the mayor, are among the throng jostling for seats, peering at the three rings that fill the center of the tent, and waited excitedly to begin. As the lights go down and the audience settles onto their seats, the circus's performers take their places backstage, awaiting their cues. Suddenly, several of the performers closest to the curtain that separates the three rings from the rest of the tent leave their assignments, gathering in a small crowd to exchange frightened whispers and hushed gasps. Amid the group, his body contorted as though caught forever in the throes of terrible pain is the corpse of Ringmaster Myron Thunder Stendhal. Everyone in the circus know Myron for his amazing, powerful voice that could bring instant silence to the largest crowd, and he knew everything there is to know about putting on a successful performance. Now he's dead, but the crowd is still out there, and they're expecting a show. As the other performers stare at the corpse, whisper to each other, and anxiously peer around the curtain, the professor, a thin and frail veteran of the circus, looks up. Well, what are you all standing around for? He asks, his weak voice barely audible in the hushed silence. Have you seen that crowd? We haven't ever had the tent packed this full. There's a show to put on, and we have to find a way to do it. So finish your makeup. Get into your costumes and send in the clowns. And leaves the administration of the circus up to you. <sighs> the show must go on. <laughs> we pause for a moment and cut back to a previous scene where Myron Thunder Stinhall is standing in front of a grand circus, having sold out the show. He says, My good folk of Aberton, I am pleased to introduce to you the one who makes all of this possible by keeping us in the black and not the red. Please give it up for our bulk keeper, Horatio Calder! Patrick, would you describe your character for us? Yeah. Horatio is a half-elf, although he seems maybe a little bit more on the side of elf than human. Um, he wears a neat tunic um, with a little, little bit of filigree, um, although it is mostly uh, cream-colored. Um, his hair is auburn. His eyes are a dark, almost matte blue um closer it seems to elf than to human um he wears a uh a necklace with a heron on it that sort of dangles from his neck whenever he when he bows um to this introduction um and he uh at, there is a little bit of of ink on his nose which whenever he talks um you'll notice that his fingers are actually also ink stained um and either if he is thinking or particularly stressed uh perhaps about a murder he tends to tends to grab his his nose and leave some ink there all right uh ratio the first one to speak up as this tense hush silence falls over the circus where you all are gathered down here if you haven't seen so far uh, the circus members, other than you, uh, are, are looking around just stunned, shocked silence, but uh, the professor has given the signal, and Horatio uh, very keenly said the show must go on. Um, Petra is going to light a um, flame in her hand and say, well, 
This is unfortunate, but I've seen death before, and we must give the people what they want. Cut to a few nights ago, thunder in front of an audience saying, Children and those with weak constitutions may want to leave the circus now, for what you are about to witness will surely fright and amaze you. See before you a strong, powerful woman who wields flame and sword as if they were second nature to her. Summon forth her own shadow to do terrible battle with. May I present to you, good people, the le mistress of flame and sword. Sarah, will you describe Petra for us? Yes. Uh, I'm playing Petra Doldramas. Uh, P <coughs> PD for short, but only certain people can call her PD. And if the people that, if other people call her PD, they get a look. Um, she is a human tiefling, and she is dressed in all black. There's a lot of leather. Uh, it's probably kind of dominatrix looking. I feel a little bit. It's probably <laughs> some like big tall boots that go probably above the knee, and so flaming red hair that matches um, the fire in her act. Uh, she is um, trying to think. and every once in a while as she's walking about the cir circus and um, not in her act, you can see a cloud of smoke either coming out of her eyes or her nostrils or just kind of following behind her every once in a while as she's walking who wants to go next <laughs> <laughs> you heard the man places in three you hear me a few nights ago thunder before the same audience may i have your attention please we have with us someone who has sight beyond sight Someone who can talk to those who have passed beyond this mortal coil and glean such information that it should be impossible to know. Good people, please, ah, at the wondrous, clear, cognizant Calder. Marion Calder, Ross, go ahead and describe your character for us. The younger of the Calder brothers lurches into the center ring. He lifts up his head, and uh, under his eyes are deep, dark circles, as if he hasn't slept in quite some time. Uh, very much unlike his older brother, Horatio, Marion tends uh, to favor the human side of things. He's uh, below average height, even for a human, and he has perhaps a few more pounds than any self-respecting elf would probably say that they would have. <laughs> and uh, unseen from, uh, from the audience, perhaps, uh, pieces of his costume, his padded costume that he wears, uh, are being pulled in uh, odd directions by unseen forces. Ooh, spooky. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Arshis is going to... Like, he was already nervous about this just because of how big it was. Uh, but he's going to, like, he's, like, pacing at this point. And then when when uh, Marion says, you know, places in three, he's like, okay. Uh, so he, he starts, like, trying to push people into places, like, trying to, to get people uh, what they need, but trying to, like, uh, manage the situation. Uh, before an audience, though, maybe this is more in your head rather than uh, an actual thing you heard Thunder say. But he steps forward. Good people, I tell you truly, I could not run this show without somebody behind the scenes coordinating the various entrances and exits, the clowns and roustabouts, the animals, the elephants, everything you see before you would be impossible without the deft hands of the lizard folk, Oashisk. And Ross, would you describe your character? Um, he, he's a lizard folk. Uh, he is a, what, si six foot or so. He has kind of like a sandy kind of coloration. He's very, t like, lithe, so he has a thin kind of frame. Um, 
he um, he's kind of have this I wouldn't say nervous air about him. He's definitely worried about everything going correctly. Uh, he he definitely appreciates the praise though. Uh, so he's gonna, you know, take his bow, or in, <laughs> in maybe in his head or in real life. Sure. Um, and uh, but secretly, he's he's running through all the possible things that can go wrong, and what he could do if uh, he needed to fix them. He just wants to do it right. Excellent. Uh, you see, some of the other performers by this point are starting to kind of like go to their places, do things that they are needed to to get ready for the performance but everyone still has this nervous air no one's really sure about what's supposed to happen at this point uh, the clowns look particularly sad uh, oh yeah fabian's gonna go over to the clowns and say yeah, pick oh. up your pick up your jaws we can't let anyone on the outside know that any tragedy has befell here we must present them with the fantasy uh, a few nights ago once more to thunder the ringmaster on the center stage saying Children come forth, it's everybody's favorite time for the capery and japery of that wrinkly kitty. It's everyone's favorite clown, Jingle Puss! <laughs> Garrett, go ahead and describe your character for us. Yes, yeah, so, so, so Fabian Finks, uh, aka Jingle Puss, is a hairless tabaxi. Uh, his clown style is very Comedia dell'arte, Harlequin, his outfit is bright, iridescent pinks and purples and reds and triangular patterns covered in bells his exceedingly wrinkled face covered in white cake makeup uh with uh accents around the eyes to make his already oversized eyes even larger uh and a particularly oversized hat just ridiculously sized um he's known for his acts of graceful clumsiness <laughs> all right it begins to try to cheer up the other clowns about who who were the first to uh, act as the professor has kind of commanded them to go into distract and stall while you try to get all this together so the clowns are immediately going out and doing their whole routine you hear some claps and some hollers and whatnot um, as everyone else begins to prepare and then we have one but one more player that is happening uh faith is going to run over to the professor and say shouldn't we do something with the body i mean we can't just leave him there uh, and for the last time, Thunder says, Folks, I have to be honest with you. I'm not really sure what this one is doing at the circus. She just came here a year, ag a week ago, and thinks that she's going to be some great acrobat. But in the meantime, she's going to punch people to fix their wounds. May I present to you the hopeful faith? Go ahead and describe your character. It's a tiefling, obviously, with uh, black hair, red skin, brown eyes, and two rather prominent horns. She's currently dressed in all black, but it's really dressed more to kind of like hide in the shadows, to kind of be out of the way, because she knows she's not supposed to be on stage, at least not yet. But it, even with the black outfit, you still notice that she, ha she has two visible tattoos, a tattoo of a heart on her left on the back of her left palm and a t tattoo of a skull on the back of her right palm. Uh, as Faith comes over and kind of stands by the body of Thunder and across from the professor, the professor takes Thunder's large, uh, overly flowing cape uh, and takes it as a veil and drapes the body with it. In good time, Faith, we will address this, but for now we have to decide and kind of looks to the rest of you as well. The order of the performance. I'm sure that Thunder had something in mind, but he did not share it with me or the others beforehand. He usually calls it uh, during the performance. So we will need to determine our acts and quickly. We should start with an opener, just something to get the crowd warmed up as the clowns distract them. I leave it in your hands to decide who goes first. Uh, so, if you want to get a good idea of what performances you have now at your disposal, uh, three of you, um, Marion, uh, Jingle Puss, and Petra, uh, each have a signature trick that you are fond of performing in the circus, so you have those performances available to you. Um, I think we said Horatio is currently being a bookkeeper and doing the non-performer role of that. 
uh, Alarshisk is doing uh, basically clown coordinator is you're just trying to make people uh, you know able to do uh, the clown action an additional time and make sure people are running where they're supposed to be um, and then Faith I think you were going to do Medic is your non-performer role is that right? At least two people can kill themselves so I thought that might be a good idea <laughs> It might be good to have a Medic on standby this is a good idea um, yep. Uh, yeah, medic, and then, uh, clown coordinator. Okay. Uh, so, beyond that, you have several NPC tricks, uh, and so you see on your journal tab on the right-hand side, there's the circus NPC tricks. You have Axel's amazing aviary. Axel here, uh, fairly unproven, not really been in a big circus show before. Uh, and has this amazing trick with doves. Uh, you have the Dwarven Throwers, who uh, are these four dwarves, Kyo, uh, sorry, Thyolir, Kyurnir, Yilnar, and Yalyal, uh, who use cannons and catapults and whatnot to launch themselves through the air to the delight of all the people there. Uh, you have Eliza and Mr. Tickles, um, who Eliza is uh, this lady over here, who has a big old snake uh, that is in a cage next to her. Uh, and also a wide assortment of other smaller snakes that she goes and plays with and does all kinds of you know, snake charmery with. Uh, you have the Flamboni sisters, Philomena and Fiona, who juggle with fire and juggle do a juggling act back and forth. You have the Featherfall Five, the Kambali family here, who are more traditional acrobatists and tightrope walkers and all that kind of stuff. And then finally you have Mordain the Diva, uh, Mordain the or Mardane the Magician, as her act is officially called, who uh, uses acts of illusion, uh, escapes from a locked chain underneath a water-filled box uh, without the use of magic. Uh, you have those six NPC tricks available to you as well, but it's up to y'all to decide who goes when. Okay. Which is one of the dwarves. I like seeing the dwarves. Yeah. Let's not start off with, like, Something is creepy. Something big. <laughs> Something big. But dwarven not... throwers? I think dwarven yeah. throwers would be good. Yeah. All right. So you kind of do a little huddle real quick and you're like, uh, dwarves. Send the dwarves first. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> the dwarves. Kjornir, Yilnar, and Yalyal. Uh, Fjolir pipes up. Hey! Hey! We're going on first. All right, boys. Let's go like we practice. Bring out the cannon. Uh, and the dwarves <laughs> immediately start going and running out into the ring. Uh, so for the NPC tricks, uh, you, it's pretty straightforward. Each one of them has a static bonus to what they can do. Uh, so for example, the Dwarven Throwers have either, you can make for them a plus seven acrobatics check or a plus 10 athletics check for their trick check. And I'll leave it up to you guys who wants to make the first trick check for them. Are we using, like, are we just... We're using You'll whatever they use they're... their bonuses, so anyone who wants to roll a d20, and then uh, you could technically choose, and there's not a good reason why you would choose acrobatics over athletics at this point, because they have the higher athletics bonus. Uh, either way, subsequent checks will take a minus 5 and a minus 10 penalty. So there's not, like, different DCs, basically, for each no. one? Okay. It's, it's only if they get uh, different, you know, traits, or if, you know, there's certain non-performer roles that are helping out with the tight ropes or something like that. They can maybe get more bonus to acrobatics, but uh, to be safe, you can do the athletics check. So we just do a d20 plus 10? Uh, yep, for whoever wants to be the culpable one to roll for them. <laughs> uh, first roll. <laughs> nice! First roll. Oh, no. First roll is a one. Thank you. Oh, Wait, God. so how often Beautiful. can I do the clown thing? Uh, is it just once per performance? Since uh, it is once per act. So this is the first act. <laughs> uh, luckily, the clowns are still out there distracting people as the dwarves are kind of like, hut, 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 rolling the cannon out, and the cannon fully loses a wheel and kind of skids over. And the dwarves are like, oh, they have to like, you know, stop. One of them gets like partly stuck underneath the cannon uh, because that is a critical failure. But uh, since you have the clown coordinator, uh, Oarshus, you are able to uh, send in the clowns as a reaction to turn that critical failure into just a regular failure. <laughs> okay. 
Oh no, my character or artist is like already. <sighs> it is already every performance. Already going wrong. <laughs> yes, it is already. <laughs> Uh, just, just the worst thing you could possibly do. Uh, so, uh, the clowns kind of cover and they get into a whole act, like, oh, they lost a wheel, they, the clowns have their own little, like, you know, wagon, and they do a whole thing, like, oh, it's a big thing, losing your wheel is, ha ha, a joke, and, like, look back to the dwarves, like, get <laughs> up and do your freaking act. Uh, so, uh, they can still keep making more checks if you so desire, however, they've been taking a minus five and then a ten, a minus ten to the sec third one. So, does that just mean you fail if you don't make any more? Uh, nope. So, basically, you're uh, either adding or subtracting uh, excitement to the circus. Um, so, on a failure, however, there is uh, no effect. So, it would have been a critical failure, which uh, would decrease the excitement of the circus. But, luckily, a <laughs> failure is just, like, nothing happens. Um, so it's up to you if you want to choose to uh, do the trick check uh, further times in an act, or just say like, okay, that's it, we're moving on to the next act. <laughs> well, plus ten I is a pretty big bonus. Athletics is the highest bonus we have. So second time. So I think we should do a second one. Here we go. Oh, fourth coordinator. One d twenty plus ten. Uh, so the minus five on that. So a twelve. <laughs> Which is also a failure. You're like, okay, got it together. Uh, it's not critical, though. Failure. Right? It's not a critical failure. Yeah. That's good. The DC is 15 on these. Uh, so they load up Kjörner into the, the cannon. Uh, the cannon fires, but just kind of misaims the trajectory. Uh, you see him go and luckily land into a big bunch of hay bales, and there was a horse kind of munching on it. So the horse kind of runs out immediately <laughs> around to it, and the dwarves are like, oh, scramble, and they kind of do some somersaults and some uh, you know flips to make up for it. I just did, we we went uh, in my head. I'm like we went through this so many times. I think we should take <laughs> the off the stage. <laughs> uh, I, I I make a note in my ledger. Fix dwarf everything and underline <laughs> underline underline underline. Uh, all right, do you want to let the dwarfs try one more time, or you want to pass on to the next act? I think it's. Time to pull them out. Yeah, <laughs> All right, you're yeah. They're like, <laughs> go do the do this several times. Uh, and the dwarves kind of do an awkward bow and then slowly wheel their cannon. Uh, Yal Yal has to like hold the one axle up because the wheel is still off of it, uh, and they're just like shaking their heads, like, "Oh my god, oh my god, why?" Um, so dwarf and throwers, act your first act, your big opener is done. Uh, so, uh, so the Dwarven Throwers, <laughs> basically the Dwarven Throwers cannot perform again this circus. Uh, oh, so, boy. next you move up to Act 2, the build-up. Uh, this is two tricks going simultaneously, so it's up to you to decide two more folks to send in. Simultaneously? Oh. I think we should do a couple of, like, physical things. Things. Yeah. Well, you could Definitely. you could do like a fire theme, like Flamboni and Petra. I think Eli that's a good idea. I like that. I was gonna say El maybe Eliza and Petra, because that's a snake charmer. Oh. Okay. Is like the Flamboni sister? Is there more? Is there? They're the, they juggle uh, fire. They're the they juggle. Yes, their big thing is flaming jugglers, uh, all kinds of things they set on fire and throw it back and forth between each other. Yeah, we could I put guess like a flame bony sister on either side of Petra while she does her act. Ooh. Yeah, it's a lot of fire. I like that. Yeah. We've, it's a regular three of fire. Big fire. All right. Uh, all the fire. So act two, the build up that, uh, simultaneously. That would be cool will be... I'm, like, in the middle. Sure, doing Petra my thing. does her whole act of all the Flying Bunny sisters go wrong. Uh, so, in a desperate bid <gasps> to make up for the dwarves, uh, you send both the Flying Bunny sisters right, and Petra see, out. Can... Uh, the Flying Bunny sisters kind Take of saddle up behind, uh, beside you, Petra, and say, yeah, let's fucking do it. These dwarves really, really screwed the pooch in the first act, huh? Yeah, all right, let's do this. Let's, let's go ahead. Uh, Petra, after you. Uh, and so both Philomena and Fiona are ready uh, to back up you, and they kind of go and move to each ring, so they're doing kind of some long-distance juggling 
uh, as you come out. So Petra, coming out there. Um, Petra, as you come out, what is your bonus to perception? Um, would it be the thing in the circle three, or would it? Be? Uh, yes. Okay. Not really yet. Okay. Um, you hear some uh, commotion and some noise from the audience, kind of off to the left of you, but you are dead set and focused on what's going on here and don't seem to pay it much attention. Um, um, all right. GM uh, layer intensifies. Yep. Uh, so, uh, both the Flamboni sisters and Petra will now make their circus checks. The Flamboni sisters begin lighting things. People are like, ooh, like they start juggling themselves. Uh, Petra, you <laughs> send the sword on fire and summon forth the shadow uh, as the Flamboni sisters start juggling with each other and they start juggling things across you and over you. Uh, so you'll go ahead and we'll do Petra's checks first. Uh, so Petra, you are... Um, watch will go one at a time. We'll do Petra, Flying Bunny, Petra, Flying Bunny. Uh, so, Petra, your check is a fortitude saving throw uh, to kind of use your grit and bear to uh, fight against your shadow. Okay. So, it's just it's just the fortitude saving throw, just not plus four, anything, right? Nope, just okay. the fortitude saving throw. <laughs> hey! It's a success! It's not one! <laughs> First success, Petra coming forward. Uh, and just going out there, showing them how it's done, showing up the dwarves uh, entirely. So uh, you do generate some excitement with that. Uh, 18. So good job all right. on that. <laughs> uh, all right, so who would like to roll for the Flamboni sisters? Roll them. All right. Uh, so they likewise can do, uh, oh, was that, that's the thing you didn't mean to roll, Patrick, the eight? Yep, sorry, okay. it's that's apparently right. a, uh, really eight. So, Brian, sure, uh, the Flamboni sisters, um, since this is a pretty dangerous and perilous for them, I'm gonna say they're also making their fortitude save, so it's a d20 plus seven for them. Uh, Faith is on standby as medic as all this fire is flying through the air. <laughs> hey, oh, look that's... at that. A success for the Flamboni sisters. Uh, the audience starts to go ooh and ah as the uh, fire trick seems to be doing the trick uh, and generating some uh, decent excitement for them uh, going back and forth. Uh, despite the Petra and the Flamboni sisters being adept in what they're doing and performing professionally and doing this whole thing to wow the audience, uh, you can't help but see that Philomena keeps like looking over her shoulder every now and then looking toward the stands over to the left hand side over here which uh, one is Philomena? Uh, Philomena is kind of in um, stage left uh, this one over oh, Flambo oh one of the sisters one of the I Flamboni see. sisters yeah on the left hand side uh, so unless anyone wants to do anything else about that we can move on to the second set of checks um. So she, is she looking like in the stage, basically? Uh, she is looking kind of to the stands off to the left side, <laughs> you know, kind of behind her. Can I see it from where I am? Like here? Uh, yeah, enough in that direction. Uh, sure, you can poke through the curtain and look over in that direction. Would you like to make a secret perception check? Sure. Um, actually, you know what? This, uh, no, yeah, what's the perception bonus? Um, sorry, I didn't have. Uh, uh, perception is six plus six. All right. Uh, so, uh, Oarshus, uh, being the stage manager, you start to notice any kind of things going weird. You notice the, you know, how the performance performers are doing and how they're noticing things around them. Uh, what you see is that in the stands uh, are a group of about four individuals that are 
kind of going around and pointing and, you know, jostling the people next to him. You see they all have kind of tankards of ale or a flask or and they're going around. Uh, and you kind of see this one hanging off the shoulders of the two people in front of him uh, who obviously don't want anything to do with him. And he's like, yeah, I, got, I got two couples that they're going to burn the one in the middle. They're going to burn her alive. Oh, I've got a whole silver piece that they burn the whole circus up. <laughs> and they slosh alcohol over different places and whatnot. Uh, and can I around them are pretty. Uh, can I see Horatio from here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of assume you guys are generally milling about backstage, but the backstage is just kind of this one big open area all behind the curtain. I just didn't know if he was like collecting tickets or something like that, or if it was in front or somewhere else. I don't know, Horatio. Where do you think he would be? Um, I think I'm probably sitting just where I can see the axe, and I'm I'm taking notes on on how everything is going at this point. Sure, kind of kind of off to the side, you know. It's an, an inconspicuous place and taking notes. Can I, like, motion to him to, like, keep an eye in that direction, like, point it out to him, sort of? Uh, sure. You can point those uh, ruffians out to a ratio. And try to, like, indicate, like, you know, keep an eye on them kind of deal? Uh, sure. I will squint and watch... Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the second set of checks then for the Flambonis and Petra. Uh, if you so desire, you can make another check. Yeah, I, yeah. Is it, it's a minus five, you said? Yeah, did, was your trick have the Agile trait, I think? I think we gave you the Agile trait. No, we gave you the... Yeah. It says something about Agile on my unarmed fist thing. But... Um, go click your... I have agile. agile because we have the... Uh, click your trick trait action on the right hand side there. Uh, down. Eh. Well, Circus trick. If feather fall five men, we could get up, give all the tricks agile. Yes. So I don't know if uh, either. I guess all three of you did take the agile trait. Like, why, why would you not take take it if you could? So. Yeah. No. It's <laughs> it's the best trait <laughs> for right now for sure. Uh, so it's only a minus four on your second check. So it's the uh, fortitude save minus four. Let's see how you do. Uh, so uh, the clowns are now available if you want to turn that into a success, but then the clowns will not be available for the rest of Act Two. Uh, and the Act Two is just the two of them, right? Uh, correct. Just or just the three of them, rather. Mm -hmm. um, let's turn that into a success. All right, uh, Arash is kind of doing two things at once. You signal over for a ratio to keep an eye on the ruffians in the stage while you send the clowns. Uh, seeing the Petra's kind of faltering, her shadow seems to just start getting the best of her. Uh, and you quickly like send in the clown to be like, oh, please, like begging, stop. No, don't hurt her. We love her. We love her. Uh, and the audience <laughs> think that's freaking hilarious. Uh, so that's a send in the clowns as a reaction. And that is a success. Uh, all right, we want, want to roll for the Flamboni sisters. So it's a plus three, because plus uh, seven minus four. Uh, well, the Flamboni sisters do not have agile on their trick trait, uh, so it is a minus five for that. So a plus two, turn your twenty year old. Uh. Oop. Uh, yep, so the Flamboni sisters kind of eh, juggle, they miss one or two. It's not terrible, but uh, it is not super exciting either uh, as compared to the beginning of their act. <laughs> uh, that one dropped uh, torch that they uh, miss juggle sends these ruffians into just kind of like a guffaw and laugh. Oh, it's it's kind of audible above some of the music and whatnot now, um, where they're just kind of laughing at each other and, and laughing at what's going on. They they come down and say like, "Hey, hey, hey, you, hey, sister, come over here. I'll sh I'll give you something to juggle." Oh. And sloshing can, alcohol. Can I? At all? Can I come on. Go, go, go over, over to them, please. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, the the ruffians are over here. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, um, I, I, I understand you're having a, a lovely time, but I think it might be best if you 
um, take your your alcohol and your evening elsewhere. Well, who, who the fuck are you? We're just here enjoying the show. We pay our tickets to get in. We pay you our tickets to get in. Well, I yes, but the 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 contract here is that you are are good, um, good patrons and sit down and watch and not not distract for everyone else. It's terribly unpleasant. Uh, Horatio, go ahead and make a diplomacy check for me. <laughs> Uh, 18. Uh, they kind of take it in a bit, and then they're kind of like, oh, whoa. Uh, and then they kind of look, and one of them says, I, I'm going to ask that one on a day after the show. No, you're not! <laughs> and they just kind of completely start blowing you off. Oh. I... I can't hear you. You, you know, we have a way that we treat disruptors here, and it's it's a terrible spectacle. I'd hate to subject you to it. Uh, they, they kind of take that, and they're like, well, well you, you threaten us. What the, what, where are your, what, where are the audience here? What are you talking about? <laughs> what, 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 I think, I think we ought to taste this one some madness. Yeah, I think we ought to, yeah. I um, would like to cast a spell on one of them if i could <laughs> uh well they get ready for a fight so i want you to go ahead and roll initiative uh with okay. your intimidation skill oh God. it sounds like you were trying <laughs> to like threaten i, I don't think i trained that one that was maybe <laughs> oh my God. best uh, and anyone else who wants to go over to a ratio's aid can do initiative with a perception check and the show is still going on. The show is still going this. on during this. So Petra's currently performing. Oh, uh, if this. I wasn't, if I wasn't a performer and like, I would totally go over there. But I gotta, I gotta show. Just gotta do the show, man. With perception. Uh, yeah. Anyone else who wants to try to help? I'm like making. Uh, Can I not do that right? Just, just distress noises. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 um, so they're likewise going to do initiative off of their intimidation. Marion's sibling powers activate. <laughs> Next powers one. Activate. Oh, we don't have weapons right now. Nope. Nope, it's a brawl. My weapons? Oh no, what are you guys talking about? I got mine, but... That's true, but half of us have weapons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, so Marion activates sibling powers. Uh, we'll say, you know, you're not quite this far back. You guys are kind of uh, keeping an eye on what's going on over here. So, we'll add a turn for Marion. Uh, 24. Ooh, sibling powers indeed. Uh, and then Jingle Puss, uh, I'll say you're pretty close to the uh, audience as well, as you see this going down. Um, <laughs> oh man, your character portrait. <laughs> uh, Marion, um, you see your brother about to get beaten up by these guys in the stands. What do you do? I, uh, I go to his aid. Sure. I don't realize I haven't set up the case. Shit. <laughs> and, uh, yep, that's 60 feet. I'm going to daze the ruffian closest to me. Okay. The ruffian closest to you. Go and get dazed. It's a will save. It is a will save. Uh, all right. Ooh, critical failure. <laughs> Ooh. All right, that would be great if uh, this would show up. Let's click it again. Ah, oh, whatever. Um, it's a critical failure, so they take... Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Uh, Stunned one. Eight nice. Uh, okay. Um... So that's eight mental damage, yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay. Which is non-lethal. Non-lethal. Uh, the one closest like to you important. just kind of like boom, boom, falls over in the stands uh, unconscious immediately. 
uh, you just <laughs> shoot that one, and it, you know, it's uh, it's just unconscious. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, uh, Horatio. See, you see your brother kind of behind you and quickly <laughs> uh, do the mentalist thing and just boom <laughs> sends him down. You, the audience around you, the other patrons are kind of like, what the. F-? <laughs> They are not okay with what's going on. Uh, which which is the one that was heckling the most? Uh, it seems like the leader would probably be this one closest to you. Okay, perfect. Um, I am going to cast a spell on that one. Sure. It's the best spell in the game now. So, Personal rain cloud. If, 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 if you would like to um, avoid the horrific embarrassment of a personal rain cloud, he has to make a reflex save. Oh, is he 17? Okay, let's see if he can make a reflex save against the rain cloud. Uh, no, only gets a 10. Excellent. Um, and then I would like to see if I can make a diplomacy check and say, look, we're all being reasonable here. Just either calm down and sit in the back or, or go home. Uh, sure, go ahead, uh, as Rain starts to be like, what the f- what, 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 uh, go ahead, I'll give you a, a plus two circumstance bonus to your diplomacy check. Uh, 18. S- One better than I rolled last time. 19. Uh, you are like, you see the guy with the rain cloud kind of like back off a little bit, um, you know, kind of like, oh, and kind of go over the guy who just got knocked flat unconscious. Uh, the other one here seems to just kind of like stumble out through the audience there, but there's one more that's still like, I'm going to beat your ass. Uh, and is still pretty uh, upset with you. Uh, so, Fabian, uh, what do you okay. want to do? <laughs> I'm going to use uh, two actions to get to here just in case things get bad. And I'm going to use my third action to... Let's let's say my my clown club was somewhere over here by these boxes. Sure. Just in case. And so I'll use my, my third action to get that in hand. In case. In case things don't behave. Okay, so go. Behave. And then third action, just picking up this club, be like, uh, better not. Uh, as you're like seeing if this one guy do, does. Um, all right. Uh, so they are going to... Uh, try to beat you up, Horatio. Uh, he's going to use an action to step over here close to you uh, and then start swinging some fists. Uh, so the first fist gets a 10 to hit your armor class. Nope. Uh, and then he's going to go with a second attack and go an uppercut. Six. Nope. Uh, 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 and people Man. are like, whoa, my guy is hurting to violence. What the fuck? The oh, on, you're embarrassing yourself. The alcohol's not doing him a service. <laughs> Certainly isn't. Ma- Marion, uh, you see this one guy is still intent on beating up your brother. I uh, stride towards him. And I come up behind Horatio and I tell the uh, this guy, this rapscallion, if you so much as lay a hand on him, your aunt your great aunt is going to be seeing you very soon. <laughs> oh dear. Um, do you, is that a diplomacy or an intimidation check? That's an, that's an intimidation check. Alright, <laughs> go for it. Uh, as you see this, um, you see him kind of like ugh, punch and stagger back in the stands and go, Aunt Hilda? Uh, And they just kind of sit down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it anymore. I'm sorry. Um, and like he goes to his friend who's there as the rain. It's like, oh, I'm getting all fucking wet. Let's go. Let's just carry Timmy out of here. Let's just get out of here. Uh, and they start running off uh, very quickly away from you, scared of the colder, the magical colder brothers and their horrible powers. And they run quickly, screaming out of the circus. Uh, the rain cloud following him the entire way. Uh, I would like to clap Marion on the shoulder and say, "Good job." All yeah, right. I saw you. I saw you dodge. Not bad. <laughs> uh, sure thing. Uh, everybody gets sixty experience points. Yeah. Wow. Hey. 
Uh, and we can get back to the performance as these troublemakers are dealt with. Uh, so it is up to uh, Petra and the Flamboni sisters if they want to make your third and final check of the act. We had what? We had one failure. Uh, so you technically, because of the clowns, had two successes, and the Flamboni sisters have had one. Bring will be at a minus eight, and they'll be at a minus ten. Yeah. Right. I. I mean, I think it's probably a high risk to do that. High risk, but I will say, <laughs> uh, the to get a successful show, you currently have to meet an anticipation level of fifteen. That means uh, basically. Every time you succeed, you generate one excitement, so you're up to three excitement out of 15. Uh, you do have one, two, three, four more performances left uh, in between Act 3 oh and Act gosh. 4. <laughs> I think we have to start pushing this. So, I mean, sh But what happens on a failure? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing happens, happens on a failure. Nothing happens on a failure. On a Just critical, critical, critical failure, failure. failure, it'll be at a minus one excitement. So don't roll like a below a 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I only fail if I I don't know <laughs> I don't know I well, we can we let's just see it's the first time it's, yeah it's, sure in both it's just average anyway cares yeah it's minus eight please please don't roll please don't roll one damn it oh um, <laughs> <God. laughs> I can't do anything about that. Yep. <laughs> that was a one! I said don't roll a one! That is that's the a only way that's the only way that one. I can do a critical failure. Uh, is with the one? On your first first <laughs> second okay. text. God. Uh, I'm, I'm so not gonna... Okay. Unfortunately, uh, as that's all going along, you kind of just misstep one time and you can see your shadow that's fighting with you almost smile and seize the opportunity, and it comes forward and just, you know, does this elbow check Rip. right to your face, and you're just kind of like, Pugh! blood goes spattering across the circus floor and kind of steams up from it, uh, and you almost hear your shadow say, coming for you next time, uh, before it <laughs> disappears at the end of your act. Uh, anyone want to uh, go <laughs> for the Flambody sisters? Yeah, minus three check. Just saying. So I, I throw an eight or higher just to not get a critical failure. Do it. Okay. Just you need to do it in 18 to succeed. A DC 15. Yeah, 18 to succeed. On the dice, he has to roll an 18, is what he's saying. Yeah. yeah. Can the Flamboni sisters pull it out? Jesus Christ. Let's find out. Ooh! No! Oh, so close! So close! close. Oh, so close. close. But it's just a failure, oh, right? brutal. Absolutely brutal. It's just a failure. Nothing happens, yeah. Um, now, granted, it is a critical failure on an injury trait, which normally would mean there's a check that you could not perform next circus. Uh -huh. But, am on seeing Petra kind of take this and stumble, Faith, the medic, immediately starts running out and, like, you know, bandaging the wounds, bandaging the nose, and, like, getting you off stage and preventing that injury from affecting your next circus. Because you have the medic, you're not at risk of doing that. That's good. Uh, so that's on, that's on any fail? Uh, on if an injury oh, trek uh, crit fails, there's a chance that that performer can't perform next circus. 14 uh, is a crit fail? No, on the one she made. Oh, oh on, on, okay, yeah. on Petey's. Okay, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that is the end of Act 2, the build-up. People will clap. We're still, still impressed. It started off very strong. It was a very strong performance at the beginning. Uh, kind of petered off toward the end there, but, you know, they're, they're still pretty satisfied with what went on there. Uh, and then you have Act 3, the big number. One performance goes on here. Who would be? Marion, looks like we need you. Oh. No. <laughs> <sighs> sure. Come on. Just think of what Mother would say. All right. All right. 
Uh, the lights dim. There's a bit of mist that some of the roustabouts start fanning through, to give this kind of mystical air as the clear cognizant colder comes striding forward into the middle of the ring. But a big number begins calling out to the ancestors, calling out to the ghosts around you. Right. Uh, Marion stands uh, in the center ring. And he scans the audience for marks. <laughs> uh, sure. What's your perception bonus? Uh, plus four. Okay. Uh, you uh, spot a couple of potential marks. Um, at first, you spot someone kind of in the middle here who you've heard about and see as people kind of like occasionally go to talk to him. Uh, someone you assume to be the mayor of Aberton, uh, sitting kind of in his front, middles there, but it's a big kind of political figure, and that's not always, doesn't always go great, because they draws a lot of attention to him anyway, they don't yep. want to, you know, they don't want to say anything. Um, you do see, over to one side, uh, this pair of particularly kind of, you know, miserable looking humans, um, way off in the side stand over in this direction. Uh, you see that they're kind of like nursing a few drinks. One of her, one of them's holding her head. The other one, he's just kind of like, you know, going down. They seem like they could easily be manipulated by your tricks. All right, I will address them, and uh, I will say, "You there, in the yellow shirt." <laughs> um, lady kind of looks up. What? Me? What? What? Oh god, I hate audience participation. What? What is it? <laughs> we what? do not know each other, yes? No? What the, what the fuck is this robo? But oh, no, I don't know, just go with it. I will demonstrate that I will know things about you that no mortal mind could. What do you mean? Uh, uh, she kind of like is like she takes another swig alright if I can do it then <laughs> alright I'm going to uh, try and commune with the spirit surrounding this person alrighty for real for real, for real. For real. yes not just great aunt Hilda this time oh no oh, oh no Oh, Why no. do we roll so many ones? All right. Like uh, open. Now it is a new act, so clowns are available once more. I think I'll hold. Uh, yeah, hold it. Hold okay. it. Hold on to that one. Uh, sure. You kind of commune with the spirits. Um, doesn't seem to be uh, much around her. Um, you get that she has this kind of J name. Uh, you get that she is in a long-term relationship with the one before him, but there's no other, like, spiritual energy around them. No one really see it. And after a while of you kind of, like, trying to peer into it and peer deeper and use your stalling techniques, uh, you see her um, kind of stand up. Look, just, just admit you don't know what the fuck you're doing. This is all fake. Like, this is clearly fake, right? Like, he's just trying, he's stalling. Like, what the... F but the, and uh, you see this lady next to her uh, kind of be like, well, just just go along with it, dear. Go along with it. And she says, I, I don't have to go along with shit. And kind of like spits on this old lady. <laughs> uh, and then people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Fuck off. I'm, I paid my fucking ticket. I can just be here. What the? Uh, and you see them wow, also getting good. a little uh, rambunctious around here. It's like a college football game in the stands. <laughs> a, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so they seem to be, and you see the guy next to her seems to be kind of defending her somewhat. <laughs> Is it too late to switch to a cold reading? <laughs> uh, no, it's part of your act. You could you could try out. Yeah, I would like to. I would like to try a cold reading instead. Uh, would that be a deception or a performance? Do you think? Uh, so. I mean, the score is the same either way, but press, but for posterity. Sure. Deception. Alright. That's hey. better. <laughs> That's even with a minus four, wow. 
Uh, so you start kind of going through your whole act to deceive what's going on here. Um, bullshit with spirits. Uh, you start rattling off all these things around her and her past and uh, how much anger she has within her and how the, the spirits wish her to be at peace. Uh, and you see the, everyone around her kind of like, uh, the other people in the audience get a little teary-eyed and like, oh, oh, she has such a tragic story. Like, oh, oh, like the cut as weep for her. Uh, and she just gets angry or like, what the f fuck? No! Fuck you! No, I'm not! Um, the rest of you can see that they are getting uh, belligerent. They start pushing other people around and start like, you know, like, no, no! So everyone's enjoying it. That's a successful performance check. Uh, but they are also getting uh, quite uh, uh, pushy with the people around them. All do right. I need to do this again. I'm going well, we to... We the clown still. Yep, I'm going to... I'm going to keep pushing. Yeah, I will oh. move to the side. Okay, I think it is time for the time clowns. clowns. Alright, that'll um. turn that eight into a success. Uh, so you push, uh, continue to rattle off all these things about this person uh, and all the things that she could be in her life. She could do just so much more with what she has and, you know, the two of you could be loving relationship and have, you know, all this. The spirits want you to be free and happy and it kind of ends on this big number and the clowns are all, like, acting like ghosts at this point and acting like spirits to add to the whole thing. Um, but as they do that, you see just a full-on knockdown, drag-out fight kind of go on between these two. Uh, anyone who wishes to, to intervene can roll initiative. <laughs> Intervene. Uh, I will too. I want to initiate. So if I was hiding behind the curtain, could I use stealth instead of perception for my initiative? Uh, sure. You're, if you're trying to do a sneaky behind the curtain and come out and attack, then I'll let you use stealth on that. And there I don't, we go. I don't particularly want to get involved because I'm like I'm still trying to manage everything going on in the stage too, between sure. all of this. Sure. Kind of being out there, just in case something happens. Well, very well with my stealth, but at least I rolled. So they are going to also initiate with intimidation. Tough crowd. Uh, anyone else not get on there? Faith, Petra, Horatio going and moving to intervene. Uh, all right. Um. Marion, I'll say if you want to intervene as well, since your act kind of ends on this note as they begin breaking out a fight, you can choose to uh, fight as well, if you so desire. Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they can handle it. They're fine. Um, all right. So these two rolled pretty high on their initiative. So they are each going to pick up uh, bottles and flasks around them. Uh, and then they are going to, um, yeah, they're just going to storm, no, they're going to do that. They're going to do the, okay, first, they're going to go into a drunken rage. <laughs> uh, so they're going to do that. Uh, it's my kind of circus. Yep, so they are drunkenly raging around with these inebriates, uh, causing a, a whole thing here in the circus. Um, yeah, da, da, da. Uh, yep, they're going to do that. Uh, and then they're going to pick up bottles and kind of run down the stairs a bit toward you all, just like running against people left and right. Uh, just, just drunkenly stupor running around causing a muckus. Uh, and that's what they both do. Horatio. Move here, and then I have to measure how far away they are. Shit. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> um... What else can I do? That's my only use of personal rain cloud. Um, I will, yeah, I will move another 25 feet. There. 
Um, and then I will attempt another diplomacy check and say, calm down, calm down, calm down. It's not, it's just, it's an act. You're supposed, it's supposed to make you happy. <laughs> All right. As you Enjoy can see it. by their reaction, obviously the things that I have said about them are true and they know this in their subconscious. <laughs> Uh, uh, Marion does his grand performance, and the two of them are just uh, running toward Horatio with broken bottles in their hands. I would like to hero point that. Uh, sure. Try every My roll. natural one. 19? 19. 19. Uh, despite your protestations and trying to be like, no, 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 they, they don't advance on you further, but they keep their momentum going uh, and seem to be just in this drunken stupor, like... Fuck everybody and everything. Uh, Would you say perhaps beyond reason? Perhaps beyond reason. I'll, get, I'll let you get that with your hero point diplomacy <laughs> skills. These guys cannot be reasoned with. Uh, so then Petra. I'm so far away. Uh, you would not be quite that far away. I'll say roughly you're hanging out by Mr. Tickles. I'd be like, Dash. Actually, you kind of be near Faith because Faith was, you know, nursing your bl bloody nose and whatnot as this all kind of broke out. Uh, okay. Um, How'd you get back into place? I <laughs> <Hey>, one second. <laughs> you just gotta punch it the other direction. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it, it, it's also how I, I cure amnesia. Um, it would be helpful if I knew what my speed was. I still have not... Oh, there we it go. is probably 25. 25. Yeah, it is. Unless you're, what, elves? Unless you're an elf. Yeah, 25. Okay. Um, so if I put the spell on my sword, do I have to hit them with the sword, or can it be, oh, so otherwise... Uh, you have to the end of your next turn. I'm not gonna hit them with the sword. sword. I'm not gonna hit the people with the sword, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I will move then. I will move over. Sword attack. It's a minus four penalty, right? For, um, the non-lethal. Non I have to make non-lethal lethal. It's minus two. So I'm gonna move, and then I guess I will double move. You could even triple move if you wanted to. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I triple move. All right, uh, Petra, you come running back out and these guys come. People in the circus stands are like, is this part of the act? We don't know. Uh, Faith, what are you gonna do? I'm also gonna move. I'm gonna try to pretend like I'm a clown as I'm moving. All right. But I'm gonna end up triple moving. So I'm gonna go to here and then here and then to here. I am part elf, so I am fast. very fast. You're like, oh, excellent. Haha, -ha, I'm the clown. I'm capering clown. The North Horns. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, well, these guys are going to move forward, uh, and then they are going to. Um, fist strikes. Okay. Interesting. So they're going to go up with broken bottles uh, and go. Let's see. Double move up to Horatio and be like, ah! Uh, just go hog wild. Uh, so they each get one improvised weapon attack against you, Horatio. Uh, the first one is going to be an 18 to hit you. Oh, that hits. Okay, you take five points of slashing damage as the bottle shatters Ouch. against you. Uh, and then the other one gets a 19 to hit you. Also hits. It's five more slashing damage as they Ouch. break bottles against Horatio. Can I uh, enter the end of initiative? Yeah, that? same. This is... Sure, the rest, anyone else who wants to uh, roll initiative at this point can. Uh, basically, you'll enter in the initiative next, at the yeah. next round. Dear goodness. 
Uh, so yeah, these drunken guys are just, just something about them. They're just going ham. Uh, Horatio, how do you respond? There's these bottles of booze and everything and broken glass around you. I first look to see how much this spell costs. Did I not put the action points? Okay, one second. <laughs> Probably two actions, but... Ah, yes, 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 yes. Excellent. So I am going to move um, behind my friends. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not going to move that far. Um, I was there, right? Yeah. I am just going to step, and then I'm going to cast two spells. Uh, first, I will say, uh, stay very close to me. And I'm going to cast Protective Ward, which will give any ally adjacent to me a plus one bonus to AC. All right. And then I will cast <laughs> shield. That's our chance, man. Okay, you kind of bring up all these shielding magic and like, ah, oh, stay close. Uh, Petra. Right there. Dang. Yep. <laughs> I they were... Closer. Wow. Okay, yeah, they did. Um... And if you're within uh, five feet of Horatio, you have a bonus to your AC. Okay. Yeah, let me let me change that color to like green. Well, <laughs> slightly more visible. So I'm gonna cast days on my sword. Sure. And then I am going to move, uh, as part of that you can move. Move here. And then I am going to non lethally hit the person that's in front of sure. me. Sure. I'm gonna move to there because that's five feet from them. Oh, sorry. It's kind of a small grid, it's so hard to see, but uh, yep. Um Yeah, and so I'm gonna non lethally hit uh, my sword sure. so and it's the a... days will go off. Yep, so it's a minus two to your attack, so you attack with your sword first and trying to hit them non-lethally. And with the flat end of the sword, it's just vibrating from the magic of days. I just feel like we probably shouldn't be murdering our guests unless push ah. comes to shove. Ugh. Yeah! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Do you want to Spicy! Holy <laughs> crap! Uh, yeah, that's. I don't 20, think you needed the days. <laughs> Twenty-two non-lethal bludgeoning damage. Holy crap! Uh, wow! Uh, <laughs> you come. This woman who was uh, called out by Marion and all these different things. She's coming forward, and she just expertly kind of imbues some of that shadow into your sword. Boom! Whack her forehead with the side of there. Uh, she is still up from that um go ahead and cast your day's spell because it goes off now that you've hit and she's gonna have one step worse on her saving throw because it was attack was a critical hit so I just click it just click days okay. yeah um so she's a dc 16 will save which these drunken guys actually uh, i'm really glad that you gave me the thing where i can move as i'm casting otherwise i would not be able to do like anything. yeah slide casting is a big deal <laughs> um so makes a will save uh double check and make sure that their drunken rage doesn't do anything to that um it does not uh, so they fail. Uh, so they critically fail. So they critically fail. Uh, so not only are they taking, uh, six, uh, mental damage, uh, that, um, okay. Dude, there's a couple things happening on this. This is exciting. Uh, they are also stunned, one. So they just, you kind of, <laughs> she's just, <laughs> Uh, doing that whole number for a bit. Um, nice work. Holy crap. Yeah, I... <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, that's a very effective turn by Petra. Uh, we'll get to Arashisk next turn as you guys are just kind of like, oh, this may be serious, but maybe maybe Petra can handle it. Uh, Faith, what are you going to do? What does stunned mean, uh, mechanically? Uh, it means she loses one action. Yeah. yeah. If she's stunned for a minute, then she loses all of her actions for a minute, but stunned one is just she loses an action. Stand here and hide behind Horatio's blue bar. So no Although, I think it means she can't take reactions in the meantime if she has any, because she I cannot think... act until she expends Senseless. the stun. Act. Uh, action to lose. Man, I spent a whole campaign spamming days, and now everybody's critically failing. Yeah, you never crit with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I and I get it too. so much. Uh, it just wasn't meant to be. No. <laughs> oh, roll 20 hates me. Wait, wait. Uh, I don't see anything on stunned about reactions but yeah i mean it's it's the you can't take actions right um uh, Wait, how many actions you lose uh you can't act while stunned which to me implies no reactions but it's up to you Kind of unclear well, whether it's for they were them. It's not text. really going to matter, but <laughs> uh, Faith, what are you doing? Are you just moving up the next to a ratio. Move to here, and then so she's still in the fight. She's not knocked out yet. No, she's stunned and kind of staggering there and barely up after being flacked in the head by Petra's sword. I'm gonna punch her in the face, non-lethally, because sure. it's not lethal attack. Uh, nobody blessed me. Whew. Critical miss. All right. Uh, she's there kind of staggering around and staggers one, two, many steps to the left, and you punch right where she was, and it just... Whew, uh, punches and kicks. Yeah. Don't punch. Zero, zero. Ah! 22. A minus four. Uh, lethal. Um... Yeah, it did. That was natural 19. Uh, so with that, you do kind of just do a boom, rap on the head, which is the last thing that needed to happen for her to get knocked unconscious. She is unconscious. Uh, and you see the guy behind her as soon as you come this tiefling. These two tieflings come and beat up his girlfriend, and he's like, <laughs> What the fuck? Charlene, no! <laughs> just gets really, really angry about all that. Uh, and then Fabian, you will act next turn. Uh, so it's back to his turn. He's like, I'm gonna avenge you, baby! And goes just like a flurry of blows onto Petra. <laughs> Trying to punch you a bunch. A uh, flurry of blows with a capital F? Uh, no, just just, fist. just, fist. just regular. He casts fist three times. Uh, let's see. Ooh, that's a twenty-two to hit you, Petra. Uh, sorry, I don't have. I was on my cell list. Um, Luckily, you've already done your act. Yeah, because I well, I get a plus. Uh, plus one to... next to a ratio. Yeah, it still hits because I have a... Okay, uh, so that is eight points of bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, just the fury of this dude bro who's Ow. drunk as hell and his girlfriend just got knocked out. He's just like, Ugh! Uh, So he will do a second fist. Oh, at me? Yep. Okay. Uh, that's only a 10, though. No. So you kind of like, ah, take the first fist and then dodge around the second one, and then the third one comes right at you uh, for a 14 to hit. And you're able to parry that one aside. Oh, she just goes wild. She's unconscious. Uh, Marion, in the center ring. Uh, moving up to here and range of 30 feet. Am I close enough? No, not by a long shot. I'm just gonna... move up to here. Alright, you just come 
beside your brother to make sure that he's all right. Yeah. Okay, so the three movements. Horatio. Uh, I will sustain my protective ward, which will mm -hmm. increase the range. Goes out. To 10 feet. People are like, ooh, is the magic I think this is part of the show now? Just like, because all these circus performers are suddenly out. They're like, oh yeah, that's Petra. She was the one now here just a minute ago. Yeah. And then <laughs> uh, I will also cast Days. Man, uh, the Days is all over the place. Doing a lot of days. Days for days. Days for days. Uh, <laughs> no fails. Just a regular fail. It is. Four mental damage. Uh, okay. Damage. Um, he seems to uh, kind of take it and like ugh, ugh. he seems to be somewhat resistant to mental. <laughs> that's weird. I guess because he, oh, because he's drunk. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's really a barbarian. Mm-hmm. Or something. Maybe there's a barbarian that resists mental damage. Drunk and barbarian. Uh, all right, you attempt to daze uh, this other one, Frovo, and seems to be just in the full dude bro fury of the moment. Petra. Okay. You knocked out this uh, one girl, you and the other tiefling. <laughs> he's not, she's knocked out. She's unconscious, yes. Okay. He's not, though. No. Okay. Unconscious. Well, then I'm... I'm very drunk. Because uh, I don't really want to do, like, like a necromancy spell on him. Because I don't think that's like, would be non-lethal. So I'll, I'll just hit with, um, is he still dazed? Uh, no, the other one was dazed. The one that's unconscious now. Okay. So. Um, I don't know, well, I don't know if it's necessary to daze. Um. Well, uh, take... Yeah, up to you. It's a cantrip, so it doesn't like expend. You don't yeah. ever run out of I'll dazes. Just... You know what? That's my thing. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do daze and then hit with the sword. Uh, technically, since daze is just one action, um, you can cast it uh, and then hit with it and then potentially hit it again with your sword non okay. so you But it would be a minus. Just... Daze is two actions. Is it two actions? Yeah. Ah, Horatio, you're cheating. What? So uh, I, I sustained in days. Oh. It, it, it said one thing. action on the thing. I'm sorry. It's two actions for days. Never mind. Okay, so I'll, yeah, that's that's what I was oh, thinking. I, I was thinking it was two actions. So that's you, you why I said me. that. You Let me, yeah, my drop down's wrong. Yep. <laughs> Let me fix that. It's all good. All right. Yeah, that's why I thought it was two actions. That's why I said yeah, I was going to no, cast it, it and then I'll oh. hit. So it's a minus two to... I was like, wow, Daze is one action. That's really good. <laughs> you said it was a minus two to hit with the sword? non lethally yes. Okay. Oh. That was not as good. That was bad. Uh, 13, wait. Uh, because he's in his drunken rage, it hits. Oh, <laughs> He has a penalty to AC <laughs> when he's in a drunken oh, rage. Oh, Lord. Uh, so, yep, that's gonna hit for 11. 11. Uh, you tip the flattest sword again. Uh, people are like, some people in the audience clap. Is this uh, part of the act? Go ahead and cast your daze upon it, because you're just gonna daze this one to death. You don't have to make his will saving throw. Okay. Uh, and he fails the will saving throw. Uh, it doesn't critically fail, but still takes... Uh, actually, uh, he resists that mental damage. You see him in just a stupor that the day doesn't seem to break through uh, with it, so... You smack him again, Dang, he's dude. just like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna defend her honor, I'll defend you, Jaylene! Oh. Uh, or I just, <laughs> what do you want to do? Um, is, is there like a, a run thing, or is it just move? move multiple times. And I'll say, Fabian or Arshus are kind of mid-stage by this point. Um, the oh, nice. Yeah. Is is there like a run thing that like you take penalties to defenses, or is that just not a thing anymore? It's just more than one stride action. Okay, that's what I just wanted to see. Just one, want to double check, just in case. A little, a little extra speed on that lizard. Yeah. It's not fleet. At least not yet. Uh, so, what? 75 feet would be... What's your normal speed? Uh, twenty-five, I think. 
Uh, yeah, um, 75 feet. So 75 would be right there. Um, let me just double check that real quick. 25. Yep. And I'm gonna get there to the up to the corner of the curtain. All right. Uh-huh. Orashisk, the stage manager, strides over, seeing all the commotion and clatter, which is not part of the show. That's Faith. correct. What are you gonna do, Faith? I don't, have to, I don't want you know people to get hurt. Sure, safety is important. <laughs> My protective aura. I'm gonna move to here. All right. Um. Is a keys can I can I do a non-lethal key strike? Because it does uh, extra damage, but uh, sure. I think it's kind of piggybacks off of the traits of the attack. Right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So non a key strike fist would still do the fist traits. I think. <laughs> so I am gonna expend my key, my focus to cast key strike. And then I'm going to do a flurry of blows, which means it makes two attacks. All right. And very precise, non-lethal points, right? Very, very precise. So I'm, I'm, I'm punching him with the, with the, with the skull and with, with the skull fist. <laughs> I'm flanking Flat-footed. him. Flat-footed. Flat-footed. Uh, yeah, flat-footed. Uh, because you are flanking, kind of just focusing on Petra as the smaller framed Faith kind of jots around and then uh, and so that does hit. Uh, so eight bludgeoning, and I said the skull, so it's five negative damage. Eight bludgeoning. I don't know what negative damage means. It's not that healing, right? It's not heal him five points, right? It's That's... it's negative energy. Yeah, okay. it's the equivalent of necrotic. Uh, so you see him kind of. Ow! Ow! Uh, uh, still up, but very hurt by that. <laughs> uh, I'm those chakras there. I, I'm going to do the, <laughs> the the second half of the, of the flurry then. Zero. Is it 23 hit? Uh, yeah, indeed it will. Does it crit? Does, is it a 25? Uh, yeah. A... No, a 23. It, uh... is, it, it, it is a 23. Okay. Yeah, and he's it is a 23. And he's flat footed. So that is a critical hit. And just so you know, as long as he's alive, positive damage would not harm him. Just, just saying. So you know. I'm, I'm still doing negative damage then. All and right. So 12 points. Non. So I could do non-lethal negative damage. I guess that's the part I don't understand. That sounds weird, right? Uh, like non-lethal negative energy. Mm-hmm. Or right. should... Make an animal attack. You get a plus one bonus. Because I don't want to kill him. Yeah, it's it's additional damage. I don't. Um, I additional think... damage is not super well defined <laughs> I think because it's in the um, uh, non-lethal attacks section that says you can make a non-lethal attack uh, then if it doesn't have the non-lethal uh, instead of killing them it's, it's automatically yeah yeah no, I'll yeah because like you can because you can have a weapon that is flaming Splashing and also damage. whatever the non-lethal yeah. thing is. And all of that's non-lethal. Yeah, so I'll all say your, your fists tip will do this normally. will knock them out because they have the non-lethal trade. Right. Uh, so I, I can choose to make them lethal and I don't take the minus four penalty because I'm a monk. True, true. Uh, but so I'm not in, choose, I'm, in but this I'm not case, <laughs> I'm not going to kill this one. <laughs> you, say, you mutter underneath your breath as you just hit him twice in the spine and that kind of extra jolt of energy causes him to do this kind of flailing dance and everyone's like <laughs> laughing as he kind of does that for a minute and then just boom face plants on top of his girlfriend unconscious uh, and everybody clapped yay uh, as you take a bow uh, yeah, I I, I, my third action. I have a third <laughs> sure. action. It's my turn. You all, you all play it off beautifully as the performers <laughs> and circus folk that you are, uh, and be like, this was all part of the act. Everyone says the clowns go uh, and start dragging them away. Yeah, I was say, I'm gonna everything. slip out here and maybe try to drag them back, but sure, you just kind of the drag them away. They just kind of get 
discreetly out of the way uh, as you're able to return back to the back uh, behind stage and resume the circus performance that everyone still claps and cheers. Uh, for doing that, uh, you each get 80 experience points. Oh. I want 40 now. Just Just chugging right along, man. Doing this whole circus thing. Okay, so it is now time for the finale. Act four, three tricks, one in each ring. The big, 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 this is it. This is the, for all the marbles. We got to put uh, Jingle Puss out, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Jingle Puss, Eliza, and Mordane. I was thinking that we're oh, we do still have Featherfall Five. Yeah, yeah they have I a better bonus if we're gonna medicate. That's a good thing. <laughs> Featherfall Five. So maybe Mordane and Featherfall. Yeah, I, th I think I like that. Uh, all right, so I'm hearing Jingle Puss, Mordane, and the Featherfall Five, huh? That's a right. lot going on. <laughs> this okay. is a lot of okay. Okay. Too. No, I... Um So I'm assuming Orarshus being the stage manager, you're probably the one who goes up to Mordane to inform her that it's her time to perform. Sure. Um, uh, she's kind of over just like polishing the glass and you see that she's about to put like a the covering curtain back on her glass as she turns to you. Oh, Orarshus, it's you. I just assume that I'm going to sit this performance out since I, my trauma at seeing thunder destroyed like that and killed has caused me to nearly go into a fainting spell. I I don't think I'm going to be able to perform. Besides, I had an arrangement to be in the big number and, well, you've given that away to the ghost speaker, so I might as well go back to my trailer. Uh, and... Like, while she was saying the story, I was going to look concerned at first, and then when she references being the big number, I'm just going to give her, like, a confused expression. Like, I don't recall that conversation. Oh, uh, it, it happened. Uh, I, you know, we can't ask Thunder, poor bastard, is dead, but I, I assure you that's what's happened. Um, and, you know, since there's so much going on, I can't... Uh, not that I'm saying this, I'm thinking this, like, I can't... Uh, deal with like trying to like talk her into it or something like that because I tell sure. I can see it's going to be like an ordeal <laughs> sure um, so uh, let's do we have Eliza and Mr. Tickles I'm thinking Mr. Tickles <laughs> so you're just like fuck it we're not done with Mordane let's go to Eliza yeah alright <laughs> Uh, so you're like, okay. Let's give it to the snake. He's nicer. <laughs> sure. We can always, yeah, we can always get her to finish if we really have to. Um, uh, so you go up to Eliza and you see kind of this whole time Eliza has been uh, over by Mr. Tickles and kind of like checking on him and seems to be kind of concerned uh, as you come up and says, "Oh, well, she asked, it's you. Um, sorry, are you trying to make me in the the full ones, yeah?" Yeah, I'm just gonna like gesture towards uh, her and that no, towards Mordane and like shrug, like. Oh, sorry, I mate. I, I don't think I'm gonna be as uh, much better than her. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like Mr. Tickles is, is sick or something. He's, he's lethargic. He's not. He's not eating anything. I can't understand what's happened. He, you know, it just seems like he's not ready to perform. Lord, these people. I'm gonna glance in. Uh, Axel's direction, and does it look like he is also going to come up with an excuse? <laughs> um, Axel kind of nearby says, oh, 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 I, I can perform. Uh, yes, yes, uh, me in, in the, the finale. Yes, that sounds a brilliant idea. Of, co of course. If the snake is sick, the snake is sick, send me in, right? <laughs> uh, Doves would look nice flying up amongst the performers in the air. Just go uh, <laughs> does he seem guilty at all when he is saying this I say with my plus four perception bonus to sense motive um yeah probably not he seems a little nervous but I'm too flustered to like even worry about 
that kind of thing. It's just like... Um, sure. So, uh, Fabian, you're ready to just go out and do kill it all like you always do. Jingle Puss is ready to perform and put put on the mask, mm -hmm. become the clown once more. Um, you see Axel kind of, like, shove some doves under his sleeves a bit. And be like, okay. <laughs> All right, finally, finally, excellent. It's your time. It's your time to shine. It's your time to be in the finale of the circus. Oh, this is what you dreamed about as you were a little boy. All right, here we go. <laughs> we're going to be in the performance. Let's go. Let's, let's do it. Did you see him kind of like trying to move his feet, but they seem to be stuck? Can I like push him <laughs> out? <laughs> um... Sure. I'm gonna call that a, a coercion check and be an intimidation check. If you wanna just be like, time to go. <laughs> time to perform. <laughs> be an intimidate check. Oh no. It's just gonna be a flat check. Uh oh. natural <laughs> twenty. Critical success. Oh, You're like, this is what you need, boy. This is for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> and you critically oh. succeed on sending poor Axel out into the middle of the stage. So, you know, he, he freezes for a moment, but then he's just like wowed by the audience. The full magic of the circus takes over, and he begins immediately shooting doves out of his sleeves. Um, he's going to get a uh, plus... He gets a plus two circumstance bonus on his skill checks to perform. Uh, and all of you get ten experience points. Oof. All right. Uh, so Axel has successfully been convinced to perform. Uh, you have a Jingle Puss in the middle, uh, and then your third was going to be the Kenbali family. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you're kind of like, eh, I did it, I did it, uh, and then you see uh, Dafiri Kenbali, who usually speaks for him, be like, um, hey. Uh, Oasisk, um, we just went out and had uh, a runner check on our safety nets out there. It, it looks like they've been chewed through or something. They're, oh, they're God. like, prone to break at any second. I don't know what's going on, if it was some of the fights or something, but, like, we can't, well, we, you know, we're not going back to perform without nets. We're just not going to do it. I can literally cast Featherfall. <laughs> well, can you cast it on five people at once? No good point. Uh, I, I um, can anyone? Mm, I maybe I can. Can anyone so help I've... me fix them? Maybe. Mending cantrip. There's not going to be. It's going to take a while. It's going to take several minutes at least. I mean, they're they're bad off. Um, I'll take that spell. Mm, I don't have any so, spell. All right, here I go. I'm going to get a more Dan. Oh, Marion, how was the big number? Did you enjoy your performance? You know we will leave you here. Yes. Leave me? You couldn't bear to be without me for even a day. And I don't need your ghost to tell me about that. If you don't go out there and prove that you're, you know, still part of the circus then you're gone um <laughs> oh jesus Jeez. uh you can make an intimidate check <laughs> scary i imagine here. she's like a sunset boulevard type woman right <laughs> a has been um all right uh she's like well i suppose i can play second finger fiddle to the Axel the Unproven and a Wrinkly Cat Clown. Here I go, I suppose. Uh, and you have successfully convinced Mordain uh, to join in the circus. Uh, you all get 10 experience points. Wow. So generous. As Mordain oh my. is convinced, I guess. Uh, all right. So we've got Jingle Puss, Axel, and Mordain what a performing cast. for It's the like a magic finale. show. Yeah, it is the, the end. There is magic going all everywhere as Fabian cavorts about uh, Jingle Puss. Uh, we'll start with your trick check. And the clowns okay. are ready once more to be sent in, but only once during this act. <laughs> okay, um, what, what should I roll for the... Uh, 
I guess if, if two people are doing magical tricks around me, I can do sort of fake magic tricks that are more comedy, right? Like the comedy of errors magic, like... Sure. Oh, something like that. Like your performance, performance maybe? Yeah, performance scale. Yeah, well... Oh, no. Strong start! Ego plus. That's a failure. <laughs> Saving the clowns? Oh. Nah. Save the clowns. Save the clowns. Um, okay, just to, just to let you all in on the numbers. Uh, oh, no, don't tell us the numbers. <laughs> it's up to you. I could, should I tell you the odds? Or yeah, no? yeah, we, we need yeah, to we, know. Yeah. Okay, uh, <laughs> currently <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> currently your circus has four. Oh. Uh, 15. Is it possible to get? No. No, because we have nine rolls. Because there are three acts, three 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 actions per act. We can, right. we can even if we succeeded on every single. What is crit succeeding, dude? Does that do two? Critical critical success. Uh, oh, bumps up. An anticipation and excitement, so it makes so it doesn't actually difficult. get us closer. Yeah, fine. that's fine. But we can see, you know, how close you get. Let's let's you know see what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. So now we're gonna say traumatic night. Uh, yes, you know a lot of stuff's gone on. A lot of stuffs happened. A lot of things. Um, a lot of things that weren't in the script. I'll have you know. Sure. <laughs> uh, so Jingle Puss, that's okay. We'll go ahead and do the rest of Jingle Puss's actions. So since you have the agile trait, you can make another performance check with a minus four penalty. Okay. One sec, I'm just going to add the... Uh, and then minus four. Okay. Does that work? Oops. Is I'm, What did I do wrong? Slash. Wrong slash? Or did you... Did you are you typing it in? Yeah, I was going to try typing it in so I could add that minus four. I'll just roll performance, performance and just minus four. And, yeah, the bonus should say... Uh, pop up tell you. So minus yeah. four from that. Oh, but that's Which is... uh, critical no, success. But a, but a crit is bad, right? Um, yep, so yeah. that generates, uh, that's a crit. That's a, you know, that's a crit. Woo! Critical success. Uh -huh. Generates one excitement and one anticipation. Hey! The second part of Jingle Porsche's performance is just off the charts hilarious. <laughs> it's just so freaking funny. This old clown kind of like loses some stuff in its folds of the, you know, flappy skin of the clown, of the cat. Um, and people, the kids are cracking up. One kid pees his pants laughing so hard. Uh, so make your final trick, uh, Jingle Puss, this is a minus eight penalty this time. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to put the minus, the temp minus right in. Yep. Minus eight. Hey, that's another success. Wow. <laughs> Jingle Puss just, like, wows the crowd. You know, it's a bit of a slow start, but uh, Jingle Puss is a bit of an older performer. You know, I've been around the block a bit, and so but just when, when Jingle Puss gets rolling, it's just, it's, you know, the best. And everyone's laughing and, you know, just waving their hands up in front. Uh, some people have had, like, a big Jingle Puss sign. They show up and kind of, you know, fan, pan in their... <laughs> what, what they do is they, like, put on like like bread rolls and stuff on their skin to like make folds around them that's kind of like cosplaying for you know jingle puss oh my um, so jingle puss horrifically racist or not uh, yeah uh, unknown at this point oh, no. <laughs> don't know what, mm, mm. uh so axel is up next axel in his very first performance is just going wild the plus two bonus he has now has a plus nine to his check uh, shall I do the not a wizard? Sure. Hey, twenty-eight. Look at that! Another the crit success. critical success. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the finale bad for us. We have to go out with a bang, right? Yep, it's just doves flying left and right, just absolutely madness. Uh, so next trick check will be with minus five, so d twenty plus four. on the nose 15 on the nose is another success uh it is just axel is having the time of his life he's just you can see the happiness and joy on his face as he makes a few doves land on a few kids heads taking a little piece of popcorn and fly off in the direction 
Uh, and then the final check, uh, minus one. <laughs> a, a four, four is a critical, a critical failure. failure. Let's, uh, clowns I mean, to wrap up. Clowns, yeah, let's clowns to wrap up his. Sure, clowns <laughs> wrap up Axel's last performance. He kind of stumbles on the final, like, bit of his tricks. Like, ah, I don't, I didn't write out of doves. Ah! <laughs> kind of, like, shakes, shrugs, and the clowns are, like, you know, look in the sleeves, like, oh, he's got no more doves left, and, like, carry him off the stage. Just like, he's out of doves. Time to go. He, he used too many doves on that critical success. Too many success. doves. Too many doves. Uh, and yeah. then, finally, the end. Mordain. The Magnificent. Her box. It's kind of a bit of a smoke and whatnot and special effects. Uh, so she does a fortitude save um, with a plus eight bonus. Whoever wants to roll that. I'll do it. All right. So d20 plus eight for her first check. Um, am I able... Whoops. How do I do the plus? Well, well. Um, that's fine. We can add short to that. Uh, unfortunately, that's a... 14, which is 14. not quite oh. enough. She has a bit of trouble at the first, like, trying to struggle out. There's a bit of water that gets in and kind of messes up her hair and makeup just to kind of, like, fix it with her shoulder a little bit, so it's not so uh, good. Oh, here we go. Um, so the next trick is with a plus three. Thirteen. She's still like uh, some bubbles and whatnot. People are like, is she gonna die? Like she's in the in the cage. Like I think we should send in the clowns on that one. We already sent in the clowns for Axel. Oh, we did. Axel. Yeah. 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 I see a crit fail on one of them. Uh, all right. Not not so great. And then it's a what's uh, the last one's gonna be uh, minus two. You can do it. Can you do a minus on here? Let's see. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. Two <laughs> is a crit fail. So, <laughs> Mordain, uh, the Magnificent. Mordain, you suck. It kind of has to, like, bump up against one side, and it eventually gets free, and then she kind of tips the entire uh, glass <laughs> enclosure over and kind of sputters out like a wet fish. Ah, ah, there was, there was something wrong with my, my box. There's something wrong with my box. And she kind of goes and uh, clatters along the ground. Uh, the clowns also kind of help tip the thing up and just kind of slowly and awkwardly Lord. carry her off. Um, and after that, uh, the professor comes out. Thank you all so much for coming. This has been the Circus of Wayward Wonders. We hope sincerely that you've enjoyed yourselves. And everyone was like, and start to kind of filter and murmur and come out as they uh, slowly leave the tent. Um, so, for your uh, final score here... So it was 8 up, to 17 or something? You wound up with a final anticipation of 17. And a final excitement of 1... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I imagine the reviews are like some of the performances had potential, but they couldn't seal the deal on it. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a. a <sighs> we we made it through. You know, we we got to the other side of the circus, and I guess that's uh, I guess that's what matters, huh? Uh, so at the end, um, your show did not go as well as you anticipated. It was a failure, unfortunately. Uh, with a failure, it's your prestige level, which starts at a one, plus your final excitement, which was an eight, so nine, and it's a quarter of that, so two gold. Uh, I think it's um, rounded down. Um, so, what would normally be two gold turns into five gold because of Horatio, the bookkeeper. Uh, so your total in the payout for the circus ends up being five gold. Uh, this is kind of the pool of money that your circus has to buy future upgrades and future good things and whatnot. <laughs> um, and then uh, uh, you increase your prestige by one, even on a failure. 
So your prestige becomes two. <laughs> How much did it go up on a success? Uh, on a success, you earn two prestige. On a critical success, which is only possible if you match your excitement to your anticipation, oh my God. and your prestige goes up by four uh, in that case, and you double your payout. That sounds impossible. Quite difficult. Well, it's difficult. Um, as critical successes. But yeah. as the circus kind of winds down here, and everything is kind of coming to a close, uh, you see that the professor, the old wizened one who has been with this circus gig and circus business the longest, um, is kind of seen as the wise elder in the circus troupe here, uh, gathers you all back behind the tent, back behind the curtain. I'm gonna like pat some people on the back to be like, you know, it's we sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a, you know very trying to console each other during this time. Uh, the body of Thunder is still where it's been the entire show, covered with his cape, and he says, "I'm proud of you all. We lost a family member today, and that's hard." It, with a normal family, but we're anything but. We rely on each other, first and foremost, and the bright shining star that was Thunder was tragically struck down. I promise you this, the circus will survive. It will keep going. As you said, Marion, the show must go on, and that is exactly what Thunder would have wanted. But we will find what happened. That we will look to new leadership now. He kind of looks to each of you. We have those that dealt with unexpected threats here this night. And I suspect will help us much more in the coming days, weeks, and months. For you all, I am especially proud. Thank you. And kind of a minute after that, speech uh, and everyone starts to disperse he comes up to each of you and uh gives each of you five gold pieces and to, and to the group of you he gives you two minor healing potions he says looks like you got a little roughed up out there i didn't suspect the people of this small farming town to be quite so uh rambunctious but here we are I meant it when I say I'm going to look to you all to help lead us. If you feel up to it, I ask that you help find who did this to Thunder and get justice. What do you all say? E sure, I guess. Just gonna nod. I mean, of course. And you wouldn't even have to ask. Thank you. I can go on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will conclude tonight's session before the investigation into the murder of Myron Thunderston Hall. Next time, we delve deeper into what this mystery murder might be and who killed the ringmaster of the circus Wayward Wonders. Extinction Curse. Mm -hmm.